In 605 BC, the Babylonian army defeated the Egyptian army at the Battle of Carchemish. During that campaign, the Babylonians also took control of Judah, of which Jerusalem was the capital and Jehoiakim was the king reigning at that time. God sent a message to his people regarding their attitude towards Nebuchadnezzar, their conqueror. In verse 5 of Jeremiah 27, this is what God told his people through Jeremiah, and a message was also for the surrounding nations, those nations being the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the residents of Tyrus, and of Zidon. Here's the message, Jeremiah 27 verse 5. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. God presents his status, his position as creator, as the reason why he has the power, the right, the authority to make this declaration. He says, I am the creator. I made the earth. I made human beings. I made the animals upon the ground. Therefore, I have the right to give any part of this land to anyone that I choose. Verse 6 now of Jeremiah 27. Listen carefully. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. Keep in mind, Nebuchadnezzar had conquered Judah, God's people. If you read Daniel 1 verses 1 to 2, it is clear the Bible says God gave Jerusalem to Nebuchadnezzar. God allowed him, God willed that Jerusalem would be conquered by Nebuchadnezzar. This is odd and strange for human beings to accept because our minds are finite. We do not fully grasp the eternal purposes of God. And so God said in verse 6 of Jeremiah 27, And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. Verse 7, And all nations shall serve him, and his son, and his son's son, until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. God is prophesying the time will come when I will take him off the stage of action, and someone else will take his place. God tells his people, submit to the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. Now we know from Acts 5.29, it applies in the Old and the New Testament, we ought to obey God rather than man. So when God is telling his people submit, he's not telling them break the commandments at Nebuchadnezzar's request. But as far as possible, submit to the authority of Nebuchadnezzar. Why? He is God's servant. What does that mean? God put him in that position. That conqueror, that destroyer, God put him in that position. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 21, the Bible is very clear. Speaking of God, he removeth kings and setteth up kings. Why am I saying this? As genuine children of God, we must be very careful how we react to ruling governments. We are not authorized by God to take up protests against governments because governments are God's instruments to carry out his will, a will we may not understand. And the reason why we do not understand, we are focused on our little lives and the struggles and difficulties we have. We do not think of God trying to bring to culmination and conclusion a universal issue connected to his glory, his name, and his character. As long as we focus on us and this little world, we will miss the intergalactic implications of what God is trying to do. God argues on the basis of the fact that he is the creator and because of that, he has a right to decide who reigns, where, and how long. Let me repeat, that does not mean God wants his people to break his laws. We are to obey human authority as far as they do not oppose the law of God. God told his people, submit, when the time is right, he would remove Nebuchadnezzar. I do not know what nation you are in as you listen to this audio. If you call yourself a child of God, unless a government, a ruling power, calls upon you to violate one of God's Ten Commandments, you are required by God to respect that 
power because that power is put there by God. And as much as Nebuchadnezzar was God's servant, modern nations are God's servants in a way you and I may not understand. But God is not obligated to explain everything to us. Even if he tried, our limited minds would not understand. What am I trying to tell you? Living a peaceful life requires that we cooperate as much as possible without breaking God's law with the ruling authorities. Why? It is God who put them in position. Remember Daniel 2.21, he removeth kings and he sets up kings. In Romans chapter 13, reading verse 1, this is what the Bible says. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Notice this quotation. There is no power but of God. Every person on earth who exercises power has that power from God. Let me say quickly, you and I may not understand why, but God does not require that we understand in order for him to do what he sees he needs to do. We must trust him to know what he's doing, despite the fact it may cause some discomfort for us from day to day. But I must restate, the reason why God has the right to determine who reigns, when, how long, where, is because he is the creator. Jeremiah 27 verse 5. And so as you keep the Sabbath holy, remember your creator has the ultimate right and privilege to determine who rules for how long and where. May the Lord bless you as in submission to God's will, you cooperate as far as you can without disobeying God, the powers that be, because the powers that be are ordained of God. Happy Sabbath, God bless you, and doubly bless your children.